jQuery's foundational unit is the jQuery selection. Put a CSS selector in a string, wrap around parentheses, and put a dollar sign in front. Boom, now you have access to any element on a page. And with the selection, you can then use the jQuery API, chaining methods to get and set text, size, classes, HTML, CSS styles, attributes, animation, and everything else. The jQuery selection is a small bit of code, but remarkably powerful. Its reuse of CSS syntax makes it approachable and familiar. It allows novice front-end developers to start coding JavaScript without having to know a lot of JavaScript. But in doing so, they are likely missing a core lesson in JavaScript. Cache your jQuery objects. In and of itself, the jQuery selection is a perfectly functional piece of code. It's not until we start building actual programs with multiple selections and behaviors that we encounter problems. Here's a good example. It's a photo gallery controlled by a list of links. Each link has text, an href attribute pointing to an image, and a title attribute acting as a caption. Clicking a link changes the gallery's content. The link text becomes the gallery's title. The link's href becomes the gallery image's source, and the link's title becomes the gallery caption text. It's using several jQuery selections, and it works just fine. So what's wrong? To answer that, we need to understand what's going on at a granular scale. Let's zoom in on just a single jQuery selection. This bit of JavaScript uses a CSS selector, but it's important to remember, JavaScript and CSS are fundamentally different. This code hides those differences. That dollar sign actually isn't a core JavaScript keyword or piece of syntax. It's a shorthand name of a function, an alias for its full name, jQuery. jQuery's code provides two names for its main function, jQuery and the dollar sign. The dollar sign is just to save code for convenience. We can rewrite the selection with the jQuery name. Now the selection code begins to show its true form. It's a function call. The function is jQuery, and it's being called with one argument, a string, gallery title. jQuery is the name of the library, but it does not describe what it's doing here. To better understand how this code works, let's rename the jQuery function as getElements. Each time you make a jQuery selection, you ask JavaScript to go look at the DOM and return the selected elements. Let's take another look at the click code, but this time replacing dollar with get elements. This code gets elements on six separate calls. With each click, the same elements are selected over and over again. That's the issue. We can fix this by storing the jQuery objects as variables. When you make a jQuery selection, it returns a jQuery object. This allows you to immediately chain the selection into a jQuery method, like text. But you don't always have to select and do. The jQuery object returned by the selection can be stored as a variable. This is also called caching. I've named the variable gallery title with an initial dollar sign. This is just a naming convention, denoting that the variable is a jQuery object. Changing the variable to just gallery title without the dollar sign works just as well. Now that we have the jQuery object stored as a variable, we don't have to select it again. This allows us to only get elements when necessary and reuse those selected elements throughout our code. Looking back at the gallery example, gallery title, gallery image, and gallery caption can all be pulled out of the click function and set as separate variables. The this object is different with each click, so its variable link needs to be set within the click event function. This technique is especially useful across different functions. Our example also has a reset button click event that uses the same jQuery selections. Multiple functions do not need to reselect the same items, so we can use the same cache jQuery object variables. One thing to note, Photo list and reset button are not cached as variables because they're only used once. Caching jQuery objects is the number one thing I look for when refactoring code. 
it's not just about a little performance boost. By using jQuery object variables, you demonstrate several key concepts with JavaScript. That the jQuery selection is not magic syntax, but a function call. That you can store the result of a function as variables. And that those variables can be reused around your code. So take another look at your jQuery selections. Any of the same selections that occur multiple times should be moved out and cached as variables. It's an easy improvement and leads the way to a deeper understanding of jQuery. This video was made by Metaphysi. Metaphysi is my little company where I make powerful and easy to use plugins for the web. Plugins include Isotope for filtering and sorting lists, Flickety for responsive carousels, and Packery for draggable grids. If you make websites, don't reinvent the wheel when Metaphysi already has you covered. Try out the plugins for yourself at metaphysi.co. This video is part of Fizzy School, a series of lessons in JavaScript for anyone learning jQuery. Links for the lesson page and the code pen demos are in the description. Go to fizzy.school for all the lessons and keep learning.